Hey guys, it's uh, Joe from The Automator here with Isaiah. And uh, we were working through an actual, I was, we were on a different topic and I mentioned that the sort command had baffled me and how it was used. And I was yeah, asking yeah. Isaiah to, to walk me through how it's used because I found it so confusing and complicated. Uh, why don't you go ahead and throw it up here and uh, let's start dissecting yeah. it. Let me see. Um, and especially you would have to tell me what is the part that you find most well, yeah, kind let's, of like, let's yeah. maybe step through it. Right, right, exactly. So, uh, we were talking about some plugins that we that we know from other, for example, programs like Notepad plus plus had this, in which you could select text and hit a button, and it would go ahead and kind of like uh, sort it for you, right? Which now, is, you told me like you told me like, oh yeah, I I have a, fun a function like that, right? right? And yeah, you gave you yeah. this part here. So yeah. in this case, yeah, this one, I was trying to yeah. sort by the length of characters is what, what I was trying to do. And it's part of it. We already pulled out some of the other stuff from it. Right. But um, right, yeah. so, so line one, we're just, um, we're getting the, um, we're uppercasing it just because I, I wanted to uppercase it, which we can get, well, let's get rid of line one. Cause it's, it's relevant. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't matter right now. So, um, but then uh, now, yeah. Yeah. So the U right. The, so, so sort, this is the other weird thing to me, right. Mm -hmm. Sort is a command, um, and which is perfectly fine and dandy. Uh, and then there's the upper. What was the CL? I don't even remember. It's been so long. I think so. it, it removes duplicates and uh, let me in a case insensitive. I think it is. Let me let me go ahead and double check no, on that. Sound, I, don't, I, don't on. Think that's right. I, I basically never used the sort command, but no, I, I used to use it a lot. We have the case sensitivity, right? And this is all uh, right. So it is the case sensitivity based on the current user locale. So I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know why. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, that's very expected. But it's that's fine. very specific. It's if you're using it. English, it's okay. Like, it doesn't matter. Right. Now, the funny thing about this is like, yeah, you're sorting it case insensitive, so, right? So here's now, the other, to me, weird thing with this, with this command. Mm -hmm. you, you, it affects the variable and you don't yes. set it, you know, you're not telling it, which is, I don't know why they decided to do it that way, right? Well, Here's what I'm feeding to it, but it automatically rubs that same control. variable, right? Yeah. yeah, It is a destructive command. Oh, interesting. Okay. I That's how I would name it. So I, I would name it as a destructive command yeah. because usually most of the commands you pass in a variable and set a different variable to be your output. Right. So your your first variable is not touched. And that is always good because if something goes wrong and if that, that's not what you want, you can always refer to the first variable. In this case, <laughs> if the sort is not what you expected, now you don't have the original information right. any longer. So you lost the information. Right. That's not, uh, uh, but that's that's the, the, the concept of why AutoHotKey was kind of like, uh, put together in a very quick fashion. And there are so many things that are not the best, I would say, right? But in any case, that's how it works. That's how we use it. Let's go ahead and now, <laughs> keep using it like that, right? Now, at the end of line two, we have the F and the stir length, right? Now, right. I got, because the person, whoever it was, this is this is like seven to eight years ago that someone did this for me, right? Um, right. Because I couldn't figure it out, and they're like, "Yeah, you can you can pass your own function and blah, blah blah." But but I'm like, even now I look at this and go, "But wait a minute!" At the end there, the stir length at the end, that's the name of the function, but it's not yes. passing the parens, which seems very very odd to me, right? Well, and even then, well, I don't know, I don't know why it looks odd to you because, for example, say if I do this, let me let me go ahead and GUI add. Um, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's just a, a button. And I use the G command and I say my function um, and then okay, right? Do a show and then return. And now I have my function here, which is uh, the function that I'm gonna define as verb. In this case, you are defining a function. Remember that the G label could be a label by itself, or now it can be a function as well, right? But when you define the function, you're not passing any parentheses there, right? So why would that, why would this, just imagine that instead of F, it would be G like this, 
Well, the, the then, then I would be fine. Then it's being used differently, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so basically in this case, they mean those two things, the F and the space and the name of the function oh. is exactly the same as a G and the name of a function. They, they, they act the same way. But they're not, to, you know, whatever. They're not together, but okay, fine. No, no, they're not together, but yeah, it, 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 they, they are right. kind of like the, doing the same thing, right? Okay, well, let's, let's <laughs> the keep going. The syntax I, is different, right? <laughs> I can see on line six, uh -huh. on, the, on the function, the, the custom function we're creating, right? Because this is our yes. thing. There's yeah. two parameters, yet right. I don't pass anything to the darn thing. No, no. So, the, <laughs> the sort command is doing that for you. Oh, now, my what God. <laughs> yeah, how do you know that? Well, but basically, and this is the funny thing. Now, the thing is that it is intuitive for you in other situations. So if you go to the GUI, right, and you take a look at storing and responding to user input. Now it tells you that if it is not a variable name, the function and a function name can be used instead. And they give you an example of how the function might look. So in the example that I was just talking about, so here, you present the G label here, and you can either define it without parameters like this, because they're optional, or you can define the function like this, right? So you would do this with its parameters. You can define, you can define it either way. When you hit the OK button, the GUI command is going to send those parameters to your function. It's not you who is sending it, it's the GUI command. And this thing, I think you are used to it. Like, you know, you know that that's gonna happen. You know that when I click the okay button, the control handle variable is gonna have the, the handle of that control. I think you know that, right? No, I mean, I, I, I oh, don't- Oh, you didn't do, know that? No, I mean, I, I almost never, uh, other than me, working through our course, like I, I almost <laughs> never make GUIs. So, yeah. All right. Okay. So let me go ahead and show you. So right now, but, but I get yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. Is so it. basically, I have a button that says OK on it, right? But whenever I click on that, there's a uh, there's a bit of information that is passing through it, like those variables. Yeah, so it's now automatically, it yeah. is automatically being sent, and now you see the the control handle. You see that? Now, again, you are not passing that yourself. That is auto hotkey, when you created the button, it, it actually tells the GUI command to which, send that every time you click OK. In the, the, the background on the help here, we can see, well, OK. Right, yeah. So <laughs> here, <laughs> yeah, right. it's completely clear what- It's, it's uh, kind of voodoo, looks, but at least it's, yeah. But at okay. least you understand, well, right? So right, that's, right. that's what is going on. Right. Um, perfect, so now we know that. By, by uh, when we're using the sort command, you're doing basically the same thing um, in the sense that right here, you, tr you tell the sort command which function to use, but the sort command is going to be sending information to that function. That's what you want to capture here with those two parameters. The, the two uh, parameters that he's catching is the current value and the next value. And see, if I was doing this today instead of you doing it, at least I would have an idea of like, oh, well, let me see what these parameters are in a message box so I can start understanding. Exactly. I was just going to go. I was just going to go there. So I was just going to go ahead and do that. So let's that's go what ahead I didn't and do. I didn't understand back right, then. Right. Right. So now if we go ahead and set a message box and say it, a1 and then a2. Let's go ahead and grab this, copy it. So let me copy it. And the first one is empty. So let's go ahead and copy this here. Um, you will notice that when I run it, uh, we have the line. Uh, so let me see. That was the yeah. first. So there we go. We have the first. Let me let me separate them. Hold on. Let me separate them by a new line so that they're. Right very clear and labeled here so that we know more or less what they are into. So if I run it, the first parameter, so A1, right, contains the line return, right? And the second parameter has the return by itself. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not 
So sure, hold on, let me see. Right. Right. Yeah, so it is reading. Now, why? I was expecting something else. Oh, because it is already sorting it. Okay. Yeah, because the first one. Right. So, yeah, right. yeah. So it is already sorting. Right. And I was like, hold on. This, let me, let me, let me uh, remove the first sort <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because sure. that, that threw me off. Right. So, yeah, that threw me off for a second. Um, you change the clipboard so it's. It, right. So let's go ahead and just grab. Uh, let's just grab this. Those one. are great. Yeah, that'll be right. simple. So the first send clipboard is the one at the bottom. So that's the, that's the one that we are working with. Right. And we're comparing it to the previous one. Okay. So the A2 is the previous, the A1 is what we're the next one. Right. And it is going to go line by line. Now the next line is return. So we're in return. Sure. And the oh, A2 the is the previous one. one. Right. So it goes, I thought, I, I, I was a little bit confused on that. It is yeah. the other way around. So it is like the first parameter that we're working with is the next line, right? And we're comparing it to the previous line. So basically, if we name this, so maybe, whoa, 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 right? Because I sent, I <laughs> used sent the clipboard. Right. Okay. So yeah, I use a send clipboard here that I don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that would be better. But in general, um, yeah, I get uh, it. Yeah, this part here would be the next line, and this one would be the previous line. Right. And now I could just use those like this. Right. So basically, that's that's what's going on. Those are the two parameters that you have, and the next parameter is the offset. Um, and I, I read, let me see if I'm good on that. So the offset is, uh, here we go. So the function has, uh, the third parameter receives the offsetting characters of the second item from the list as seen in the original unsorted list. So it is kind of like where is positioned before being sorted. So I I don't use I haven't actually used that option in ages. I don't need that. But no. in general, let's, let's display the value get... to try to understand what. Right. So let's go ahead and have the offset here. Let's display it. So oh, hold on now. <laughs> let's go ahead and copy. Let's go ahead and copy this guy's. Here we go. So the next line is going to be the message box clipboard, which is line three, right? The first line, or so, or so that would be the previous line, would be sort clipboard. That's the line here on the top. And the offset is minus 81. So that is the offset for the first as seen in the original unsorted list. So um, I would say, like, would that be the um, message box clipboard? In the original sort, if I count from where I am to the original location, it is minus 81 characters. So that's what I moved it to. I moved it plus 81 characters. That's what, that's what the, the function is doing. So this is what I moved that to. So I just sorted it, but this is how it goes. Now, um, I, again, this particular option is a little bit more complex and it is only used in very specific situations. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. We'll just go to the next one, hit okay. Let's see what the offset changes to. So I don't know. Okay, right. so, so here we have return. And here now we have the over that many more. Characters. Right, and that's, that's what it moved to, right? Now this one here at the end. So now comparing the return to the message box as I'm actually those two things, the message box and the return, they are not that far away from each other. They're 20 characters away. See what I mean? Yeah. So that's what is going on. And yeah, in the end, this is the new, this is the sorted clipboard right. now. Right. So now um, what I'm, the way how we sorted it, and this is what this line is doing, is that it is, um, 
making them by the size, the length of the yeah, the, the, of the string. Time. Right, right, exactly. We didn't talk about it. So what we're doing is actually sorting it by the length of it. So the shortest one is going to be the first one and so on. Now, this thing, as you are noticing, what you're returning in here is a number. The function that you're using should always always return a number yeah it either returns it's um, returning a number yeah yeah it is either returning zero if there's nothing to sort negative or positive depending off depending on which one you want to move so basically uh, you have to keep in mind that your function cannot the sorting function function cannot return anything uh, else than a number and in this case, this is what we are getting, like the length of each of them, you subtract them. If one if is bigger than the other, then you get either positive or negative. Decides which, which yeah. goes first or Yeah, so, so the sort command will decide for you, yeah. Yeah. So it is, it is a little bit complex, but I think if we remove the offset from here and we just talk about the lines in terms of like this, like next line and previous line, it is kind of like a little bit easier to understand that the first parameter is just the next line that we're comparing to the previous line, which is right. uh, whatever I had before. So it would start with message box and compare it to the sort. That's what it's going to do, right? Yeah. Is that, does that make it a little bit easier to understand? Yeah, so at least now I understand. Like I said, it was it was total voodoo to me on how it was. <laughs> Even calling the stir length function because I wasn't used to having no right those um, guys right yeah then I didn't understand what in the world the the parameters were because like that wasn't mentioned anywhere no um, yeah and, and that's the thing so I think here in the documentation of it there's some things that are missing so it's good to kind of like either and I don't know if they provide an example oh yeah there it is yeah so they they provide an example. But the example is so, and, and again, this is to one of the topics that we were talking about. Right. Yeah, he's just going ahead and making a one-liner. Right. Yeah, that's great and everything, but I don't understand that one line. You know, like it is comparing two, sing, two things. If, it is, if one is bigger than the other, then go ahead and set one. If it is not, then go ahead and compare two things. If it is those two things, then you see. So it is kind of like... He, it is an if-else statement. That's what it is. And he's just checking two things at the same time. If they have written it in a different way, and right, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yep. So where were we? Uh, anyway, yeah, they're, they're doing Yeah, it. so yeah. in this case, uh, what, what they're just doing, if I just uh, rewrite this as uh, an if-else statement like this, you just grab this guy, if, then return one, and then you say else if return <laughs> minus one, else return. That's it. So but you have, he's making two checks in there. He's making whether one is bigger than the other, or if it is less than the other, if they're not like that, then it's going to return something. So yeah. that, that's what he's doing. Yeah, I, I'd still say though, in your above example, we used previous line and next line. Right. Yeah. It helps understand what in the world is going on, right? Right. Um, yeah, that's like, it. Hey, what that's what the hell is that? Like, what? Where yeah. That so, so, so those those um, variable names. Uh, that's the point of making them readable right because even if you in cases like you know people who have experience like i know what they're referring to more or less right and i could just infer the rest but people who have never actually programmed what does a1 and a2 mean how do i derive that information from this part here and where in here does it say it's going to give you the two items? Yeah. Lit, uh, it's right. Going to so it says that it uses custom sort, specify the F followed by this uh, to, for comparing two items in the list, right? So now when the function, 
Uh, let me see, hold on. And that's the funny thing. It actually does not explicitly say right. what the two things are. It right. just says that it must accept two or three parameters. And then it says, when the function deems the first parameter to be gra greater than the second. So it just tells you the first parameter and the second parameter, but it doesn't tell you what they are. But in general, what I would say is it just grabs the two the two lines that are one next to each other and it just passes them to you, right? Yeah. Um, but it is not explicitly explained what they are. And maybe for that reason, they just put a generic name in here and that makes it so much more confusing, right? right? So <laughs> it is kind of like, okay, well, and I'd say again, why? They, they at least should say the following example demonstrate custom sorting. It didn't say custom function, right? Like, no. It, which, yeah, okay, I should see that F and realize that's a custom function. But again, because the string sort thing, uh, whatever, it's just, it just yeah. like, it was very confusing to me of um, not the norm of other things and not a hotkey on how things are done. But Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, whenever you have custom things, People might do it completely different, uh, differently as to what they do in AutoHotKey because m many people program in other languages. So they bring stuff mm -hmm. uh, to this uh, <laughs> language in the way how they think. And that's uh, that makes it way harder for somebody who is just learning because now it's not only dealing with AutoHotKey, it's also dealing with concepts that are not seen in AutoHotKey very commonly, right? So it is complicated. Oh, well, anyway, that was that was one that I, I looked at years ago, and I'm like, I, I finally <laughs> said, screw it. I don't care. I'll just use it. Like, I tried understanding what was going on, and I didn't know people at the time, so I couldn't ask anybody. Um, and, and I'm finally I'm like, all right, I'm just, I'm just giving up. But uh, <laughs> yeah, now I'm, I'm glad we looked at it, and I, I have an idea. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you.